Okay, now the, our session will be about metadata. And we will have two short papers. Uh, the second paper uh, is a presenter here. Is it Andrew, I think? No, it's you. Okay, fine. Uh, so you know that we have 15 minutes, um, including questions. Okay, so uh, pierre Edouard Portier is coming from Université de Lyon. Uh, for some of them, perhaps you, you, you know already him because he were presenting a paper in uh, Dockenj uh, 09, Munich. And uh, so please, go on. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Um, so I will present you a work about uh, the construction of documents by aligning fragments along orthogonal dimensions uh, and how we can ease this process. Um, sorry. Okay. So, uh, first I will present the context, then what is called dimensions, then a motivation, so the, the basic idea uh, behind this work, um, and, well, some other things. So, um, I'm working with users, mainly historians and philosophers, who are trying to express knowledge by associating documentary fragments. So, uh, first of all, I don't really know what knowledge means, neither do I know what uh, a document is, but uh, I can... Uh, just concentrate on the operational thing, which is the association of fragments. That I, I can know what it is, and I will illustrate it now. So we begin with one fragment, and on the right, on the up right of the slide, I do a zoom of what we see here. So we have along the so we, we map to the X um, dimension of the Euclidean space of the screen something, and to the Y dimension of the Euclidean space of the screen something else. So here we map nothing to the X dimension and to the Y dimension, and we see one fragment. Then if I map the insert dimension to the X dimension of the screen, I can see something like that, which means that inside this fragment is contained this fragment, and inside this fragment we can find this fragment, and inside this fragment can find this fragment. Uh, then if I also map to the y dimension the same level dimension, um, I can see that at, at the same level as this this collection, we have this collection, and at the same level at this collection, etc. Then if I switch, I, I map to the Y dimension and something we call archive. Then I, I can explode the content of a fragment and see all the pages which makes this fragment. And I can play like that with these dimension um, operators. And so, for example, here I map the transcription dimension to x and fragment to y, so I can see that the transcription of this uh, page is this text, and this page is composed of fragments, of polygonal zones, which have been defined by the users, and this text is also made of fragments, which has been, so interval of text, which uh, have been uh, extracted by the users. Okay, so now more formally, we have, uh, we work with a set of identified fragments. So we just have seen some examples of them. And then we have lists of lists of fragments. This is the, the basic structure. So these lists we call dimensions, and the list inside we call segments. So for example, on the transcription dimension, we have a first list with two fragments, a page and its transcription, then a second list with a page and its transcriptions, etc., etc. Moreover, um, 
there must exist a partial function between fragments and dimensions. So it just means that a fragment can appear at most once in a dimension. So, um, our question is, what's the rationale by, behind the structuring of the dimensions? The users are free to create all the dimensions they want, uh, but can this process of, of making dimensions, uh, can we help the user with this process? So the idea we would like to defend is that we can compute some configurations or some moments, some times, when it should be effective to ask the user to formalize their structural knowledge. We can't ask them that all the time, but there are some, some very well precise times where it can be uh, useful. And in order to introduce this ID, I will introduce an, a notion of composition of dimensions. So let's say a user said that a fragment was a first version of another one. And then later, the same user or another user say that this fragment, we, we, you see which was, so this is a first version of that, and this fragment is a draft for this fragment. OK. So the first version dimension and the draft dimensions are not identical. But under some point of view and under the, the, the temporal point of view, they can be made equal. But only it only extracts a, a partial meaning of these two dimensions. If we are only interested by the temporal succession of fragments, then we can say that first version and draft are equal. Therefore, we model this situation with a composite dimension. And we say, OK, for example, d dot anteriority is a composition of first version and draft. And once the user has uh, expressed this fact, the anteriority dimension will be automatically populated with fragments. And here we see that, so this comes before that, which comes before that. And this fragment at the center comes before this fragment because it is a draft of this fragment. So now, since we said that there is a partial function which must be preserved between fragments and dimensions, there cannot be intradimensional cycles since a, a fragment can appear at most once inside a dimension. So with normal interactions, users can't, can never make a, a cycle appear inside a dimension. But once we introduce this composition uh, operation, uh, a cycle can appear, theoretically. And so let's see why. If a user say that the last fragment, uh, so the, the fragment in the middle is the draft for the last fragment. Then if I, it, it will, a, a message can appear which say, okay, given the following configuration, which we'll see in the following slide, the draft dimension can, cannot anymore be a sub-dimension of the anteriority dimension. And he is given this view, and he can do something to uh, uh, break this intradimensional cycle. Uh, so there we see the, the cycle. Uh, um, we see that this is anterior to that. And this is anterior to that. 
but the last fragment is a draft of the first fragment. So we have a loop inside the anteriority dimension. So the loop is not present now because we didn't do the automatic uh, um, uh, creation of the anteriority dimension because we can't allow a, a cycle inside a dimension. But so the user can can do something. Maybe he will delete his the, the, the fragment he just added to the draft dimension or he will, he will do something else. But he, he will explicitly express his structural knowledge about the dimensions. So once that has been said, uh, we must add that there is more than one way for the merging of the composite dimension. There is not a, a, bij a bijection between the, the composite dimension, so d dot draft and d dot first version, for example, and the d dot anteriority. There are more than one ways to, to build anteriority from draft and first version. So the algorithm I implemented choose one of these ways. But maybe it's not the better one from the user point of view. So maybe the user will rearrange the anteriority dimension. And what to do with, with his reaction to this composition? For now, I do nothing with it. But I think there is something interesting to do there. Um, and finally, what about a graph metaphor for representing the dimensions? Because we saw that strange orthogonal view of dimensions, which is which I, I took from Ted Nelson zigzag structure. Uh, but why not using a graph metaphor? So I did use a graph metaphor, and we had some difficulty for some for the synthesis of things. And, and it was quite slow to interact with the graph. There, with only small and precise interaction, we can do a lot of things. We just change the x dimension, and, and we see something completely different. So that can be a good thing, and also maybe a bad thing. I, this is a, uh, something to, to question. So uh, yes, I just, since we are speaking about dimensions. I made a reference to Flatland. If some of you don't know this uh, uh, dystopia, it can be interesting to give a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre Edouard. We have some time for a few questions. So please. Given the difficulty of handling polygons and merging them and performing those sort of operations, did you consider using um, the more two-dimensional data structures like uh, region codes and stuff like that? So, sorry, I didn't. Uh, so I couldn't hear you. We just <laughs> um, polygons are uh, very difficult to handle. Yeah, you tend to have a lot of trouble making algorithms that work with them. Whereas there are data structures that work very well for the sort of two-dimensional horizontal and vertical layouts. Yeah. Have you looked into any of these? So not the one I think you're referring to, but I looked at uh, something more, let's say, procedural. I look at the, the uh, J programming language, which is meant for uh, dealing with this kind of dimensions. But this implementation doesn't use that. Yeah. But you're right. I, there are better way of dealing with these structures. One more question. I have one. Um, seems to me quite interesting to 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 imagine a, a, a structure for the for the research space of document people working with documents such as you, the, 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 the one you are working with. Uh, seems also to me it's a perhaps a bit abstract this notion of uh, of uh, giving an interpretation to to the dimension. Yeah. Uh, 
do you think it's uh, it's indeed abs too abstract for them or did yeah. they did they deal with that in, in so it's difficult it's much more difficult that than uh, um, um, a graph metaphor that's for sure so there is a learning learn so, uh, the learning curve is is not the same but once they're used to it for uh, uh, operation they do often it's very uh, 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 fast they can do things very very fast and so they are pleased with it but now I'm working about a, a conjunction of these dimensional views with the more traditional graph metaphor and how we can make the two interact mm -hmm. and because yes it's not uh, that easy to, to give. Thank you. Thank you.